it's good to see you. But then I was expecting you. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Monday, September 18th. So I've done it again. I've gone out and found you three hot penny stocks. I do this every day. I go looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And the stocks I find to share with you, I determine they're hot by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that have heat, that look like they're ready to break out, that have a lot of volume coming in. When I find a chart with heat, then I go looking for a catalyst. I think of the chart as a campfire and I want a nice fire going. When I find a fire that's burning nice, I go look for some lumber. I look for that catalyst, a filing, a press release. If I find something, that's probably going to make that fire burn brighter. Those are hot penny stocks and those are what I bring you every day. And I got three to share with you right now. First one we're taking a look at is an American cannabis company. This is Unrivaled Brands Inc, ticker UNRV. Her chart, it was an atypical breakout chart, but she's done broke out of it probably around the DEA news time. And she took a little dip and now she's taking off again, looking real strong. She's had some good news come out. Plus, being an American cannabis company, she's got that DEA catalyst sitting on the back burner that could explode at any moment. You haven't heard. Oh, about uh, two weeks ago, the HHS, the Human and Health Services requested that the DEA reschedule cannabis. They've got the last word on it. They've asked for it to come down from the dangerous Schedule 1 down to the safe Schedule 3. That would make life easy here in America. And it would give cannabis companies a lot of benefits. They could sell their products to other states, to other countries. They would also get tax deductions. And that's a big one. Even if they don't sell any more cannabis, they're going to be making more profit because they get to deduct everything. And they haven't been able to do that. So they've got that catalyst as well, being an American company. So Unrivaled Brands finished today just under three cents at 2.89 cents. And she dropped about 5% today. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to call this the better tier because they have to audit their financials to be here. Unlike the pinks, they don't have to do any auditing on their financials. So along with those verified numbers, we've got verified information, a verified profile, and a transfer agent verified. I tell you to always look for these, especially with OTC stocks. You don't get a lot of verified information, and this is all stuff being validated behind the scenes by the OTC markets. So I always look for these. And we've got the best one, penny stock exempt. This tells me that this company has been in business for at least three to five years, have had millions of dollars in assets or revenues during that time period, and they've kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven they're responsible. They remove that riskiness you get with startup companies. So the QB, you have your verified numbers, these two ticks, and that middle tick, you've got all sorts of verified information and time. So this company's looking pretty good. So what is Unrivaled Brands all about? Well, they tell us here that Unrivaled Brands is a company focused on the cannabis sector with operations in California. Unrivaled Brands operates four dispensaries and direct-to-consumer delivery, a cultivation facility, and several leading company-owned brands. Unrivaled Brands is home to Corova, known for its high-potency products across multiple product categories. And I've been flashing you up a few pictures there. Another one of their primary brands is Cookies. Cookies is a huge cannabis company, but they are private. They are not public, but a lot of your public companies have deals with Cookies. And they sell marijuana. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Naked buds. This is like pot porn. <laughs> I love it. So this is what they sell along with other products. And they package it up like Sherbert. And they give you a nice description of the marijuana. Unbelievable. The aroma. It's creamy and fruity with a hint of gas. I think they mean diesel. I think that's what they mean. The flavor is sweet sugary cream. And the experience, relaxed body feel with a happy head high. 
<laughs> you didn't get that 10 years ago from the guy you were buying your smoke from. So those are the two brands they're primarily working with, Corova and Cookies. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, we did get some increase today, over 50% going from 409,000 shares up to 687,000 shares. Share structure for unrivaled. We got a lot of shares in the outstanding share count, about three quarter billion, but most of those are owned by the management, the insiders. They got 468 million of them. That only leaves us with 304 million in the float, only. <laughs> 304 million is not a small float. Financials for unrivaled. Well, she's had some good years and bad years, but the last two have been great. She has increased $10 million from 2021 to 2022, ending 2022 at $52 million with about $17 million in profit. Quarterly, last year she had some strong quarters, got real weak here at the end of 2022, and the first two quarters of this year, she's doing roughly $8.7 million, about $4 million profit every single month. Steady as clockwork. Disclosures for Unraveled. We do have a couple of current ones here, one for September 12th and the 11th, they're 8Ks. I looked at these two. Both of them were for small loans, under $50,000 each. Real small loans. So let's take a look at the news. So I've gone all the way back here to March of this year. Unrivaled Brands and People's California reach a settlement in terms to terminate all pending litigation. Now, I did not go back all the way to see when this started, but they had a problem with another cannabis company. And rather than fight it out, they've come to terms to work it out. And not just work it out, but maybe help each other out. And then they closed that. Whatever it was they had going on, they closed it in May. Then they had another litigation deal. And this is the most current piece of news that came out on the 12th. They tell us here that Unrivaled Brands and Mystic Holdings reach a settlement. They agree to explore collaborative opportunities, working with their enemy. Unrivaled Brands, a cannabis company with operations throughout California is pleased to announce the resolution of an outstanding litigation with Mystic Holdings. On the heels of the Department of Health and Human Services recommendation to reschedule marijuana from the Schedule 1 to Schedule 3, both companies have designed to affect a strategic vision anchored on the idea that working on building a long-term partnership is better than resources spent on litigation. Right? Lawyers ain't cheap. The collaboration could empower the two companies to leverage Mystic Supply Chain and Cultivation Facility in Nevada, along with its retail footprint, enhancing operational efficiency and cost effectiveness across California and Nevada. This partnership could also unlock cross-selling opportunities and access to new capital. Now, Mystic's president states, we're excited about partnering with Unrivaled, a seasoned operator in California the most mature cannabis market in the country. Their entrance into Nevada's more favorable regulatory climate will be a strategic benefit to both companies. Unrivaled brings with them deep relationships and experience which will benefit the consumer with greater product choices. Then, Robert Baca, the chief legal officer for Unrivaled, stated, the resolution of this litigation underscores our commitment to turning challenges into opportunities. Unrivaled and Mystic are best served capitalizing on the talent, knowledge, brands, operational and manufacturing expertise and marketing experience that each brings to bear. The companies are united in a common cause of setting a new standard in cannabis. So this is a company I appreciate. Right there, I've seen two litigations and the way they solve it is to work it out partner together, work together, let's, let's make some money, let's not spend money. So I'm very excited about that. The one thing I don't get is I'm kind of thinking this deal is on the heels of the decision of the DEA. One's in California, one's in Nevada. As far as I know, there's no way around that border. <laughs> you can't get anything from Nevada into California legally, and you can't get anything in California into Nevada legally. So how they're going to help each other right now, 
I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for that decision. There are cannabis companies out there that have made deals from Canada and America that can't do anything until the laws change. So this is what we're looking at here. You've got unrivaled brands making strong revenues, settling these litigations and working it out with them so that they can all make money. More to come. Let's go check out that chart. Who's ready to do some charting? This is my favorite part of due diligence. We are looking at unrivaled brands, ticker UNRV. And we're going to do all of our charting on my free trading platform, my only trading platform. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So this is a one-year, one-day chart for ticker UNRV. Our 52-week high was in October of last year at 5.5 cents. Our 52-week low hit in January of 1.2 cents. And then a lot of sideways activity here with one strong bounce right here on May 4th, hitting the 200 and coming back down. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. There's our low bubble. She took a rip from 1.2 cents up to about 3 cents. You got about 250% run there. Came back down and then on May 4th, this was when that news came out. I pointed out and said, and this is just when they closed that litigation. Well, it was big news. She jumped here from roughly uh, 1.8 cents up to 3.4 cents. So you've got almost 100% run right there. Then she came back down underneath the 200. A lot of dipping and sideways activity until the DEA news came out August 28th right there and she started pushing up. She got up over top of the 200, took a little bit of break. The news came out about the litigation with Mystic Lake. Boom, it took off again. So she is climbing strong, hitting a high today of 3.6 cents. When she was back here before the DEA talked at uh, 1.5 cents. So you're looking at, uh, she was 150% gains from the time the DEA spoke until now. The volume, you can see, has been growing. Every other day, she's getting more and more in there. Osculators. Our PPO is strong, climbing, though it's cooled off just a little bit. You can see we had a fall from that high all the way down here to 2.8 cents. Our MACD, just like our PPO, or percentage price oscillator, she's up there, but she's cooled off a little bit. And you can see our price took a tumble. Our RSI was in the overbought at 75. It is now down at 62, a safe 62. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our low in the 20-day period of one and a half cents. Wasn't doing much until the 28th. Right here, she broke out when the DEA started. Well, the DEA hasn't done anything yet. That's what we're waiting on. The HHS asking the DEA to change the scheduling of marijuana, and she is climbing on that. And now she's got her own news, and she's climbing on that too. She is taking a dip right here. Looks like she's probably going to come down to our 20-day, could be the 200-day haul. Looks like she was paying heed to the 200-day haul here. So I would expect her to stop here, but it could be the 50. Could be tough to tell which one she's talking to. So she could come all the way down here to two and a half cents. Oscillators, well, because of those two red bars at the end of the day, you got to expect they are cooling off and pulling down right now. Five-day, five-minute view. Our low here is 2.2. Our high, 3.6. So you do have a 30% gain there in the last five days. She respected the 200-day SMA here. She was on it for a couple of days. She may have been under it, but it's like the magnet effect. If you are on top of it or underneath hanging on to it, you're on it, you know. So she was on the 200 all this time. And then she took off with the news and she got a little volatile in here, taking some big bounces coming down to the 50 or the 200 haul. I'm not sure which it is. Taking another bounce and now she's broke through everything. And it's tough to tell. Let's go back. Is she actually bouncing on something there? Not on the one hour. What about the 15 minute? Yeah, on our 15-minute chart, you can see she isn't just dangling in the air. She is wrestling with the 50-day SMA on our 15-minute chart. On the 5-minute chart, it looks like she's dangling in the air and she's going to come all the way down here. 
That's why it's important to jump around looking at different charts. See if she's actually sitting on something on a different time chart. So, unrivaled. She's got a lot going on right now. She's got litigation. She's solved. That's a burden off of everybody's back. They're making a deal. Somehow this is going to benefit them. I don't know if it can do much before the DEA does anything. And then, of course, we've got the DEA's decision. When they say yes, <laughs> when they say yes, across the board, every United States company is going to go up in value because they're going to get deductions. All their profit margins are going to go up. For every deduction they make, they make more money. This is exciting. Unrivaled, put it on your watch list. It is an American company making money. We now got a hot penny stock from the pink tier of the OTC. This is Visium Technologies, ticker V-I-S-M. Now, her chart is hot, but you can't see it on the four-hour chart. You've really got to zoom in, but it is a perfect atypical breakout chart. She's been building up volume for the last seven days. In the last three days, she has come out from underneath all of her SMAs, broke through the 200, pulled back just a little bit, and is sitting there waiting. And she doesn't have to wait long because big news just came out. This company is not making any revenues. But when you look at the news, you see they're doing a lot here recently. So you expect revenues, but they're not mentioning anything. Well, the most recent piece of news brought in some big numbers about money they can make. So I'm thinking right now is a perfect time to look at Visum. She finished the day at an excellent buy price, right around a penny. You buy it a penny, it hits two cents, you've doubled your money just like that. Hits three cents, you've tripled your money. It's the quickest profit you can get buying on the penny or double zero one. She finished the day at 1.3 cents with just under 1% gains. As I said, she is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we do not see a verified profile here. Not a deal breaker, but we would like to see it sooner rather than later. They do have independent directors listed over here. The only reason I know that you need to put these over here is when you have plans of uplisting. Now, I haven't read anything, but I haven't gone through all of their filings. So, seeing them listed here, there could be a chance they want to uplist. So, what is Visium all about? Well, they tell us here that they are a provider of cybersecurity, visualization, data analytics, and automation. The company is focused on digital risk management, cybersecurity, and technology services for network security, cloud, mobility solutions, and the Internet of Things. It's true context technology developed by MITRE Corporation and powered by SciGraph, provides visualization, advanced cyber monitoring intelligence, analytics, and automation. And down here, they tell us that Visium currently plans to generate revenue in three primary ways. Through a virtual appliance model, primarily targeted to the federal government, charging a seat license through a software-as-a-service model, charging a recurring monthly license fee for the true context, and through professional services to support and deliver cybersecurity solutions and services to, for their own customers. The company is focused on digital risk management, cybersecurity solutions, and technology services for network physical security, the cloud, and mobile solutions. We solve mission critical problems. So that's what they do, cybersecurity in a nutshell. What is the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump. How about that? Going from 331,000 up to 1.6 million. You're looking at over 400% increase in her volume. Share structure for Visum. Outstanding share count, mm, roughly 46 million. Insiders, the management, they own roughly 16 million. That leaves us about 30 million in the float. Not a bad float. We're not going to call it a low float, but 30 million is a pretty decent float. Financials for Visum. Well, as I told you, the company isn't making any money, which is really why the news that just came out is a big deal. Disclosures for the company. Again, I looked at these. We have some more small loans, promissory notes that they're working with, but nothing we need to take regard to. So taking a look at that news. So I have gone back here to June of this year. 
Now, this sounds like they're very busy to me. The company announces strategic partnership with Cybersecurity Assurance Services Caribbean to provide comprehensive cybersecurity solutions in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, they talk about all the different services they're going to give them, but they don't tell us for how long or how much money they're going to make. Then in July, the company Applied Integrated Technologies and Forbes Consulting announced signing of Memorandum of Understanding to partner for delivery of cybersecurity technology. Again, now they've got someone else brokering their service for them, but I didn't see anything about revenues in there. Obviously, they're coming, but when? How much? Then they tell us here at the uh, midpoint of July that they signed a $2.5 million revolving line of credit. So they've got money to work with. That's always a concern. And the most recent piece of news came out today. And that headline reads, Visium Technology receives a letter of intent from Sebastian Institute of Technology for major projects in this city. Cote de... I, I knew I should have just said this city. Contract is valued at $50 million and expected to commence in October. The total estimated value of contracts to be awarded to Visium for these projects is conservatively estimated to be $50 million, with the possibility of adjustments as the projects progress and their specific requirements become more defined. The projects under this agreement are expected to commence in October of this year. So now we've got how much and when. That's what I was looking for in any of the news. So the company's not making any money. They've got a contract minimum of $50 million that they're going to start earning in October. The revenues are going to start coming in. That is a big deal. And what's going on with the other two pieces of news? I would expect some money coming in there as well. And the chart is hot, even though you really can't see it initially. This is Visium, ticker V-I-S-M. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. This is our 52-week high. This is 64 and a half cents. We hit this in February and then crashed fast and hard, hitting a low of 006 here at the beginning of August. As you can see, lots of volume has been coming in here in the last month actually creating the most volume we have seen here. And I've looked, that is the most volume we have had in a year. And obviously she's breaking out. <laughs> obviously she's breaking out. She has been building up her volume for the last seven days. And the last three days she has come out from underneath everything but her 200 haul, which she was sitting on, this big blue one right there. And she went from about 0076 all the way up to almost two cents. So you're looking at over 250% run in the last three days. She did pull back off of that high, landing roughly at uh, 1.3 cents. But you can see she is set up for the breakout. Our oscillators, our PPO just had its crossover and is just starting to launch. Our MACD, had her crossover three days ago, and she's building a forest. Look at all those green bars right now. And our RSI was in the overbought. She has cooled down. She is at 65 right now, which isn't bad at all. That's a beautiful chart setup, folks. Let's look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's sitting on top of her 200 and her 50-day here, and then all of a sudden, an abrupt fall, down to a low of 0075, rolled back around, got on top of that 200, bounced on it a few times, and then took off with some huge leaps, going from just under a penny to just under two cents. 100% gain in that jump right there. Came back down to a nine day, continued climbing, another big jump early in the morning, and then came back down, and right now she is just under the nine day SMA. Nine day is at 1.4, we are at 1.3. Our oscillators are cooling off. That was a lot of fall in the back half of the day, so you gotta to expect to see that here. But look at this, our RSI is actually climbing right now. Interesting. Five day, five minute may show us why. All right, we got a low back here of 0079 underneath everything. Got on top of the 50, got very excited, had a nice jump in the morning, came down to the 20. 
Had a nice jump in the morning, back down to the 20. This was already up on the 9. We still had a nice jump in the morning. And then back down, and she's hovering around the 50 right now. The price is actually here at 1.3. She's underneath her 9. She's underneath the 50. Not an idea situation. But look at all the volume that came in there after market. Holy Kalito. Oscillators are cool, but I see a hint there. If you look close, everything is starting to turn up right now. They just had big news, folks. It's a company that isn't making any money. There's nothing on the books. We see deals going on, and finally they say, we got a deal that they're going to pay us a minimum of $50 million, and it's going to start coming in next month. When do you think you should look at this stock, if not now? <laughs> VISM. It is worth watching. Put it on your watch list. And for our last stock, I've got ourselves another cannabis company. But this one doesn't come from America, and it doesn't come from Canada. Not really. <laughs> this is Farmicello, ticker PCLOF. Now, it is a Canadian company, but their cannabis operations are running out of South America in Colombia. Now, personally, I don't pay a lot of mind to these cannabis companies operating out of foreign countries on different continents like Africa, South America, South Korea. They have big talk. They have big plans. It all sounds great, but I want to see something going on because it's tough for me to do research and due diligence on the companies in these foreign countries. I can't get a hold of the same information like I can here in America. So until I actually see something going on with them, I don't pay them much mind. Well, this company's working out of South America, Colombia. I wasn't paying any mind to it. I need to now. <laughs> First off, she just had a piece of news came out that tells us what she is doing, and she just got started doing it. Good time to look at it. But the charts already got a head start on us. That's right. She started running late August when that DEA news came out. She too had an atypical breakout chart. She was under the 200, broke out over it, and she has continued on. I think we're at roughly 300% gain so far since then. So, Farmicello. She finished today at roughly 20 cents and just a little bit over 5% gains. She is on the best tier of the OTC. The top tier, we call this the QX. We actually call it the best tier. It's best because not only do they have to audit their financials, but they literally give us all the information they have on the company. You get a ton of filings from them. They are the most transparent, the most trustworthy. And they've got all the green ticks we like to see over here. Verified profile, transfer agent, and penny stock exempt. So, what do they tell us about the company here? Well, they say they are a global company headquartered in Canada. They primarily work with processing and supplying of all natural, medicinal-grade cannabis oil extracts and related products to large channel distributors. And as I said, they do work out of Colombia. For a wee bit more information, I've jumped on over to the company's website. This is farmacello.com. Farmacello makes the most of the region's perfect conditions to drive high efficiency, large-scale production from their 12 hectares of open-air greenhouses. That's a lot of greenhouses. Plus, 2,000 square meters of processing and manufacturing facilities. With four full crops per year, we provide an exceptionally reliable supply of flour and extract. The company is right on the equator, so they've got the longest days you're going to find anywhere. And they supply mass amounts of produce. They do flour, THC oil, CBD oil, and they send this to different countries around the world, as you're going to see in the news. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, that's not bad. That's close to 500% increase in her volume, going from 22,000 to almost 120,000 shares. It's not a lot, but it is an increase. Looking at her share structure, well, we don't get a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is about 163 million shares. We don't know what the float is, but it won't be any higher than that, and it could be considerably less. Financials for Farmacello. 
All right, over the last two years, she's had a serious increase, over 100% increase in her revenues, going from 1.5 million in 2021 to almost 4 million in 2022. And she is in profit now. She wasn't back then. Quarterly, ooh, her last quarter was bad and I don't know why she's back to losing money here. That's not a good thing. However, I'm thinking all of this is gonna change with the news I'm about ready to share with you here. Looking at her disclosures, we don't have anything here for quite a long time, 2019, and then her financials, which are all on time. So let's take a look at that news. Now the company doesn't lack for news. They got lots of news here, but we're gonna cheat. I found down here a corporate update that came out August 10th. This tells you everything that these are telling us, but it's all in one news press. So they tell us here that the company has an exposure to 25 customers across 15 countries, a growing pipeline, a lean operating structure, and no meaningful capital expenses required in this short or medium term. They expect to be able to turn the business cash flow positive quickly as the revenue line continues to build. Then they give us some insight to what's going on in some of these countries, and it's a lot of new business. Brazil, the company's presence in the Brazilian market continues to grow. The company currently has three commercial customers in the country. Commercial sales to this customer is expected to begin Q4 of this year. In Australia, the company has added a global healthcare and pharmaceutical company as a customer, which will be its second customer in Australia. This customer has just received authorization to import THC extracts from Pharmacello. The company expects to make its first shipment in Q3 2023. That's right now. Germany. The company has made its first shipment of THC dominant dried flour to Germany and expects regular shipments to continue for the next three years. South Africa. Pharmacello announced a shipment of pharmaceutical grade cannabis extract to customer in South Africa. Pharmacello expects to make its second shipment to the customer by the end of Q3 of this year with ongoing shipments on a quarterly basis. And finally, in Chile, they get a reseller, somebody that can sell the stuff for them. The company has made its first shipment of THC full spectrum as an API, as well as CBD isolate, to a customer in Chile and expects to make subsequent shipments before the end of Q3 2023 with ongoing shipments as the customer's product distribution expands. The customer is a pharmaceutical company that imports pharma grade raw materials and supplies, medical patients across Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, and Peru. So they got a lot of countries here. They are just now starting to ship their products too. Obviously, that's going to add a lot of revenues, especially when you're sending bulk. And they haven't given us any size here about the orders or the money. We just know they do big business. So they've got a lot going on right now. Steady revenues. They've got lots of business in lots of different countries. And though they're not going to be directly affected by any decision made by the DEA, it certainly won't hurt them. And most investors probably aren't paying attention. A cannabis company is a cannabis company, right? So let's go take a look at this hot chart. So let's move over here to Farmacello. <laughs> this is ticker PCLOF, Farmacello. We are looking at a one day, one year chart. Our 52-week high hit in October of last year, 34.5 cents. We hit a low late August, right? We hit just about 8 cents. And even on the yearly chart, you can see we are breaking out right now. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. So, she was briefly above the 200 back here in January when she hit 31 cents came back underneath it, tapped it once, fell hard for doing so, and hit this low of about eight cents. And this is just actually a couple days before the DEA was mentioned in the news. And then from there, she just continued running. She got over the 50, came back down, tapped on that 50, and launched and lurched over the 200. 
from the 50, she went from 11 cents up to 22 cents, about 100% right there. And she is still climbing right now. Volume has been very strong these last few days, folks. Oscillators are all strong. Every single one of them is pointing up and on fire. You can't go wrong when your oscillators look like that. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Low bubble in this corner, perfect place for it. That is that eight cent bubble. And there's our high of 21 cents she hit today. She was below the 200. She wrestled with it over a period of two or three days there. Won the battle. There's your victory jump. Woohoo! And then took off, floating on her nine day SMA, bouncing underneath a little bit, but going nowhere but up. Hitting that high, and she pulled back, and she's pulled right back up underneath it, and she is just over 20 cents right now. Oscillators are still looking good. PPO is going up nice and steady, just like our MACD. Our RSI has had a wee bit of pullback, but not much. She is at 68 right now. Five day, five minute. Brilliant chart. We love to see a low in this corner, 12 and a half cents. There is our 21 cents. She has been above the 20. She's been above everything, but she's been above the 20, bouncing on that, primarily floating on her nine day. That's a very light price. It shows she wants to climb. She isn't even coming down, touching these heavier SMAs. And I don't think we even have a 200 here yet. Oscillators, they're a little cooler now, uh, but they're not dangerous. It looks like everything is just kind of calmed down right now. But Farmacello just showed us they've got a lot of business in a lot of different countries and we have no idea how much. They are doing revenues. They are making money. The last quarter was a little rough though. However, with the DEA's announcement, I know this isn't going to have a direct effect on this company, but I bet you she gets some sympathy out of it. Looks like she's already got some, right? PCLOF. Not an American cannabis company, not a Canadian cannabis company, cannabis, <laughs> cannabis. This is a Colombian cannabis company. <laughs> PCLOF. Come on, folks, put it on your watch list. Do I have to tell you to do this every time? That's what doing your due diligence by looking at the charts will get you. Hot charts. And we got three good companies here. Two of them are cannabis. One's an American cannabis company taking leaps and bounds off the DEA announcement. And she's probably going to continue to grow when and if the DEA says yes, because she's American. The other one being Colombian, probably not going to get any direct benefits, but probably going to get a lot of sympathy play out of it. And the company's doing a lot of business now. You saw how much extra business they're doing. And Vism is just launching. Things are taking off with them. A lot of new money is supposed to be coming in for them. But do your own due diligence. I've only shared enough to get you curious, enough to make you interested. You should do enough to make you want to invest. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.